Hello everyone, today we're covering a lot of information about the AMSO bypass filter system. We're going to be covering a lot about the oil analysis as well. We're going to be cutting apart some filters and I'm going to be tying together a lot of information that a lot of you are looking for out there as far as the bypass filtration, why you're doing it, uh, the benefits of it, um, how to tell if everything's working. So hopefully this video is very beneficial to you and you get a lot out of it. Okay, when you start talking about filtration, you have to talk about microns. A micron is one millionth of a meter, okay? It means nothing to most people. So to put it in terms that are understandable, if you were to reach up and pull a hair off of your head, it would measure right from 70 to 100 microns in diameter, okay? The limit of human vision, the very best vision, is right at 40 microns. Anything smaller than that, you would have to have magnification to be able to see it. Okay, that brings me to a point here before I start talking about bypass filtration for the engine oil. And that is your first line of defense for your engine is the air filter. Now, the quality of that air filter is going to determine how much dirt it's going to allow through it. If you uh, do not have a proper air filtration on that engine, don't even bother putting the bypass filter on because it's going to you're going to be shooting yourself in the foot, so to speak, because it takes about two teaspoons of fine dirt to ruin the upper cylinder area of an engine. Okay, and the bypass filters after it's done its damage, it's gone by the piston rings and all that. Okay, here's a good way to check your air filter, just to see what kind of quality it is, if it's going to let dirt through or not. You take a, this is a brand new uh, wet gauze filter. Just take it up and put it into the light, sunlight, bright sunlight. If you can see rays of sun through it, I'm going to go ahead and do it here, stick it up in the sunlight. If you can see rays of sun through that filter media, it's at least 40 microns. Okay, and if you look up here, you can see a lot of little white areas there where you can see the sunlight on through it. Okay, that filter is going to let a lot of dirt through. So again, I'll do it with a, uh, a Donaldson blue filter. I'm going to grab one of those next and we'll try it. But you can see right on through this filter, you can see sunlight coming right on through. Uh, it's not a filter you want to protect your engine. It's going to let a lot of fine dirt through to ruin it. So I'll grab a nanofiber technology filter and show you that. Okay, this media is called Donaldson blue. It's a nanofiber technology. We'll take a look at that through the sun, or through the filter into the sun. and. Uh, Move it around a little bit, but you can see there's no there's no little shafts of daylight getting through there. This filter has the efficiency to stop the fine dirt. I've also got some information on this filtration that I'll have a link to it to my Facebook uh, page, and then. Uh, Amzol also has these filter, this type filter media for universal air filters for the cold air intake systems. And also InGen is another company that has this type of media. Now this will flow the same as a wet gauze type filter to stop 50 times more fine dirt. This is something you want to protect your engine. I've got a, a sheet here I want to go over. And this talks about the uh, a damage of a, it's a, actually a Detroit diesel engine. And it shows the piston rings magnified at 500 times their normal size. And it's showing uh, uh, wear surface delamination on that, that top picture here. And compression ring sealing face fatigue and cracking occurring from hard particle damage to piston rings as that uh, dirt travels by the piston rings. These, this was a 396 Detroit V12 engine and they were continually damaged and required replacement every four to six months. Okay, and on the back side here, this other side of the sheet, uh, we've got scratches in the bore caused by the dirt that's getting by those piston rings that's been ingested. Okay, and then down below in the green there, uh, silica crystals, maybe fly ash from the shape, they're magnified a thousand times and those particles are 5 to 15 microns in diameter. And these uh, hard airborne particles are removed from the top of the piston rings. So 5 to 15 micron particles were doing all of this wear and that was dirt that was ingested through the air filter. So you need to have proper air filtration is my point here before you start looking at the bypass filtration. Uh, if you're not going to address the air filtration, the bypass filtration really doesn't mean a whole lot. You're going to dust the engine, you're going to ruin it. So that kind of covers the, uh, the air filtration part of it. And again, that's your first line of defense. Okay, now going back to 
your full flow engine filters, okay? The very best ones right now, they're right at 20 microns, 99% efficient. Okay, they have an oil flow dirt stopping compromise. And what I mean by that is if you make the filter weave too tight on that uh, full flow filter, you won't get enough flow through it to provide that engine enough oil to keep it alive. So they can't make the filter media too tight or you'll go into bypass mode around the filter, you'll get dirty oil into it, it'll damage your bearings. Okay, so that limits the, uh, the amount of dirt that that filter can pull out. Now, you, when you start talking about oil analysis, oil analysis is gonna be the maximum that it can see is about 10 microns, okay? So, with oil analysis, anything bigger than 10 microns, you can't see that, and I'm gonna cover that here a little bit later on. Uh, the Amsoil bypass filter, is right close to 99% efficient at two microns, okay? So the most damaging dirt to your engine is going to be between two and 20 microns. The dirt in that size accumulates 80 to 90% of the abnormal wear over the life of the engine. Nothing catastrophic, what we're talking about is accumulated wear over the life of that engine. Okay, so the full flow filter can't touch that dirt between two and 20 microns. And that dirt acts like liquid sandpaper, and it slowly braids away at your bearings and journals. Okay, the Amsoil bypass filter is going to pull that out, that, dirt, that fine dirt out that causes 80 to 90% of the abnormal wear over the life of the engine. The other thing that the Amsoil filter does is it helps take care of the soot, and that's a big concern with the diesel engines. Now, soot is typically about a half a micron in diameter. It's very small, okay? And I'll see if I can put that in here. i got room one half of a micron for soot, okay? Now as that soot accumulates, every time a piston fires, there is blow-by that gets by the rings because the rings don't seal 100%. So in that blow-by, you have the soot. Now that soot begins to accumulate in the oil. So what that soot will do is it'll do, it's a fancy word called agglomeration. And what it's doing is one micron, or a half micron particle, and another half micron particle will stick together to form a one micron particle, and then Another one micron will stick to the another one micron. Now you got a two micron particle. And it starts growing in size. So as it grows in size and it gets above that two micron threshold, it becomes a wear particle to your journals and bearings. And it's very abrasive. Okay, your full flow filter can't take it out. There's no way it can. It flows right on through it. So the bypass filter, the Amsoil bypass filter, starts taking that out once it reaches that two micron threshold and takes it out of the picture. And that soot, when you look on the oil analysis, you start uh, getting a high soot count, 3-4% soot in the oil, you'll start to see the uh, wear metal start to climb up with it. So that kind of covers uh, the filtration part of it and the reason behind the, uh, the Amsoil bypass filtration. Um, this allows you on most of the uh, uh, Duramax diesels and Power Stroke diesels that we have the bypass system on, uh, using oil analysis, we can usually run between 15 to 20,000 mile drain intervals. And uh, it works very well. I've got a lot of, a lot of customers doing that. And uh, uh, the other thing I wanted to cover too was the oil film thickness. Okay, when you're lubricating the engine uh, or different components inside that engine, it's good to know what the oil film thickness is. Now, your journal bearings, that'd be your crankshaft journal and, and uh, connecting rod bearings, they're going to run anywhere from uh, 0.5 to as much as 25 microns in, the, in, in oil clearance, oil film clearance. So that kind of gives you the range on that. Your piston rings and your flat tappet cams, they are less than one micron. Let's see if I can get that straighter there. Less than one micron fluid film thickness on those. So your flat tappet cam, that's why it's very important if you got a flat tappet cam is so you've got a, the right uh, oil formulation with high phosphorus, high zinc to protect that flat tappet cam. And your roller bearings, they're going to run anywhere from, uh, I believe it's a half a micron, 0.5 to about one micron. And the ball bearings, they're a little bit less, I think they're 0.4 to as much as 0.7 microns. Okay, so that gives you some idea of the fluid film thickness of what you're lubricating and how the uh, filtration plays into that uh, as far as clearance wise. So 
we've got that covered. Um, we're going to be cutting apart some filters here and uh, seeing what they look like. And I'm going to talk a little bit about oil analysis as well and some of the experiences I've had and tie this all together so that uh, you have a better understanding of oil analysis and uh, also why we cut the filters apart. I'll give you an example of that as well. Okay, this is an example. As you heat up that copper, it gives up of itself. And you can see it in that green color. The more heat you put to it, uh, the more it gives up of itself, the more copper it's giving off. Okay, that's exactly how they test for the uh, parts per million of wear in the oil. You're going to send in a small bottle, about a four to six ounce bottle of oil. And what they're going to do, they heat that oil up, they basically burn the oil. Each metal has its own wavelength of color when you burn it. Okay, so what they're looking at in that oil analysis is particles from 10 microns and down. Anything bigger than 10 microns is off the scope as far as what that oil analysis can see. Okay, limit of human vision is 40 microns if you remember from our chart. Okay, so we're talking about particles that you can't see without magnification. So what they're trying to do or attempting to do here is show you the wear on that oil analysis with the spectrochemical analysis how many parts per million of wear you have of that fine metal caused by those wear particles between 2 and 20 microns. Okay, It's not going to be able to see big flakes that you can see with your naked eye and I'll show you that later here with and explain that a little bit with the filter cut apart. But the oil analysis is telling you what's going on as far as small wear inside that engine that accumulates over time. Okay, And also what's not supposed to be in that oil analysis like fuel dilution, soot, um, water, um, antifreeze, which will show up as potassium and sodium. So as we're testing uh, that oil, we're basically looking at the real fine wear metals, okay, or the soaps as you would call it of the metals, just like what you've seen coming off of this copper pipe here, okay. So each, each metal has its own wavelength of light, so the brighter it is or the, the more uh, parts per million there are, the brighter it'll be. That's kind of the way it works with the oil analysis to give you some idea. Okay, so if you have and you're looking at just oil analysis as far as what's going on inside that engine, you're only looking at half of the picture and you're looking at the small half of it. The big half of it is inside these filters or on the magnet if you've got a magnet on your drain plug. Okay, because the, the uh, bigger metal that you can see with the eye is going to be caught up in the filter. And the example that I have, I've got an oil analysis that I'm going to uh, talk about here. And this oil analysis is on a Cummins, ISX Cummins. It's a W900 Cummins, or a W900 Kenworth, I'm sorry, with an ISX Cummins in it. Over the road trucker, the guy runs about 20,000 miles a month, between 15 and 20,000 miles a month. So he's changing oil once a month. Uh, brought the semi to me about a year and a half ago. I've uh, been running mobile Delvac 1540, changing it every 20,000, sampling the oil. Okay, we changed the oil to AMSOIL and sampled that mobile Delvac at 20,000 miles. And you can see here on the, on the oil analysis result, everything is looking beautiful all the way across. That's uh, sample number one. And uh, we had right at 21,717 miles on that sample. Uh, everything looked beautiful with the oil analysis. The problem with it is, uh, I cut apart that filter. I de-headed the filter, and inside that filter, what I do is cut out a section of that media. I take the head of the filter off, pull out the cartridge, cut out a section of that filter media, and then I squeeze it in a vise. And that's why I'm going to show you how to do that procedure here. Now, when I squeeze that in the vise, it gets all the oil out of that filter media. And then you can open it up, lay it out, and you can see what's in there for dirt or if there's any metal in there that shouldn't be. Okay, On this particular ISX Cummins, when I did that, every pleat had flaked metal in it that would stick to a magnet. Quite a bit of it. Okay, So I told the guy, I said, you got something going on inside the engine. I don't know what it is. We need to monitor it by continuing to cut apart the filters, continuing to do the oil analysis. And uh, uh, we did that. 20,000 miles later, we cut the filter apart. And on that filter, I could pick out maybe three or four little specks of metal. That was it. 
Okay, so it was way, way down on, on the amount of metal in the filter. Okay, every filter after that, every 20,000 miles, was showing good. The oil analysis is coming back as normal. Okay, fast forward 150,000 miles later, the truck has, or the engine, I should say, has over 300,000 miles on the overhaul. He wants to get the valve set. He's got a mechanic he's been using for years. Took his truck there, they pulled the valve cover, and he's got four cam followers that are flaked. Okay? The mechanic's saying the oil didn't protect it. So he calls me up, we talk about it, and I said, you remember that first filter we cut apart? It was full of flaked metal that would stick to a magnet. Now, if we hadn't cut that filter apart, you could come and lay this problem right at my feet. But you cut every, we've been cutting every filter apart every 20,000 miles since then, it's been coming clean. The oil analysis has been showing good. Here's my point. When you came to me, we had a flaking cam. We were into that failure. We switched over to AMSOIL. Something changed as far as the wear characteristic, because now the filters didn't have the flaked metal in anymore. And he run another 150,000 miles that way. Okay. Uh, I talked to the mechanic. The mechanic said there was four uh, cam lobes that were flaked. I said, what did the rest of them look like? He said, the rest of them look beautiful. Nothing wrong with them. So that tells me, in a nutshell, the oil didn't fail. The mobile oil didn't fail. Something happened, either the lube got cut off to those four, or in the initial startup, they didn't have proper lubrication or something like that. Okay, so my point in all this is that the oil analysis, if you're relying just on the oil analysis, it can't tell you if there's something big happening inside that engine. It'll tell you about the real fine wear particles. It can't tell you if there's something big happening. So that comes from cutting the filter part. That's the other half of it that you can see is the filter and also the, what's on the magnet as far as the crankcase magnet on the drain plug. So I'm going to show you how and, and uh, the process for cutting these apart. The tool that I have is a cat tool. I've had this one for about uh, 25, 30 years. It's a for Charlie 5084. And I've checked with Caterpillar, they still make it, and they're about 70 bucks from the cat store. So this will do the very small ones all the way up to the great big cat filters. And what you do is is uh, basically you're scoring that top off. Sort of like a pipe cutter when you're cutting a copper pipe. Cut that off, and then we lay out some towels because it gets kind of oily. This one's been draining for a while, so it don't have quite as much oil in it. But this was a filter from a Duramax that had at least 15,000 miles on it. And these are synthetic media filter. Now, a synthetic media filter has a screen in it. And that screen is some pretty tough stuff. What I use to cut them apart is the tin snips because you can use a Stanley knife but it really dulls the blade fast. It's some tough stuff, that synthetic media. Okay, I've cut apart a, a Ford filter here as well, and this just has a cellulose media in it. Those you can cut with uh, just a regular Stanley knife because there's no screen backing on them. So you can just cut out a section of that pretty easily. So I'm going to take some of that uh, Amsoil media here and get the fan fold back to where it was. And then what we do is throw some towels in on the bottom side of that vise because that oil is going to start squeezing out.
get it in the jaws and get yourself a rag and then start just squeezing it as hard as you can. Wipe it off. Crank on it hard, that'll get most of that oil out so you can see what's in it. Here's the Amsoil filter. I'll do the one before here as well. Okay. Always have plenty of towels handy because there's going to be quite a bit of oil in there you got to soak up. The thing of it is, you can do this with hydraulic filters, you can do this with any type of uh, cartridge filter or spin-on filter to see what's in it. Gives you some way to analyze what's going on inside that engine or hydraulic system. All right, that looks pretty good. Ooh, a lot of oil now. Okay. So there's two sides you're looking at, that's a clean side. This here is going to be your dirty side. Okay. And this one here is the Amsoil filter. Here's the back side, there's the front side. And you can take a look there. Again, there's probably on that one around 15, 16,000 miles on this here filter. And this Ford one here, I'm not sure how many miles around. I'm guessing probably four or five thousand. Uh, the synthetic media, uh, just talking about that, the synthetic media will handle a whole lot more heat uh, than what the cellulose media will. What the cellulose media will do is the it's bonded together with the resins, and the heat from the oil eventually will make those resins very brittle. And you can actually, I've had filters before that uh, you can take the media and and just crumble it between your fingers. The synthetic media won't do that. With that screen backing, it's impervious to the heat the synthetic media is, and that screen backing is there to support it. Uh, again, with that many miles, I'm not seeing a ton of dirt, and there may be a couple little bitty sparklies in there, but nothing really much of anything. So that kind of gives you some idea. Um, why you do the filter cut apart is to find out if there's anything going on that the oil analysis can't see. So that's the other half of the equation. You know, the small half is going to be your, your oil analysis. Uh, the larger part, particles that you can see with the eyes, you're going to be able to pick up with your magnet on the crankcase or in that full flow filter. So that kind of gives you some idea there. All right, I want to talk to you about the oil analysis kits. Uh, you can buy yourself an oil analysis kit from Caterpillar or John Deere. Uh, most of your truck shops will handle them. Uh, if you're doing extended drains with the Amsoil bypass system, there's a test on there that you have to have and have to know. It's called base number or total base number. And I'm going to go into uh, explaining that. Um, the base number is, is what neutralizes the acids in the oil. So I've got guys all over the country that uh, are my accounts that I, I help them understand the oil analysis. They'll send me copies. Uh, I had a guy in Texas uh, with a Duramax, 2015 or 16 Duramax. Had 20,000 miles on the oil, uh, sent me the Blackstone Lab uh, uh, test results. And there's nothing wrong with Blackstone Labs, don't get me wrong. But their basic kit does not have the base number in it. And you need to know where that base number is. I'll explain that here in a little bit. Um, everything was looking beautiful. Uh, the Blackstone Lab said everything's looking beautiful as far as wear metals go. But there was no TBN test. And I emailed him back and I said everything looks beautiful. But I said we're running blind as far as TBN. We don't know where it's at. And if you're going to do these extended drains, I said, if you haven't changed this oil, you don't know where the TBN's at. Uh, you've got to know where that's at. Now, the kits that I, I have, Amsoil handles, um, you can get non-postage paid and postage paid kits. Um, they're handling these kits uh, from Polaris Labs. It's a nationwide independent testing lab. Amsoil does not do the testing. That would be a conflict of interest. So these kits from Amsoil contain that TBN test. 
And you can still get the TBN test from Caterpillar, John Deere, Blackstone Labs, whoever, but you're going to spend anywhere from $10 to $15 extra for that TBN test. These kits already have the TBN test in, so you have everything you need for the extended drains. And what comes with the kit comes in a bag, and then there's another bag that you uh, put your sample in when it's all done. Um, they have instructions that come with it that kind of explain everything. So you can go through that as you fill out the paperwork. And this here is the, is the old sample report, and you're going to fill out all that information there. And they got three different labs that you can send it to, uh, whichever one's closest to you. One's Indianapolis, one's Houston, and one's in Salt Lake City. And then these are all sticky back. So this can be peeled off and put on the outside of this plastic uh, bag here where your sample goes. And then this here is uh, for your records. It's got the uh, barcode, uh, same as what's on this code right here and also right up here. And that's if you need to call the lab, um, then they can take your, your number here and find out where it's at at the lab if you need to. Uh, and then there's also a, a sticker here that goes and gets applied to the jar. So that kind of gives you some idea. This here is the oil sample kit. Fill it up to the fill line. Uh, have the engine up to operating temperature. And uh, most of my bypass systems come with a oil sample valve. I want to make that easy for you to do. So that kind of gives you some idea on the oil analysis and the kits that AMSOIL handles. And I'm going to cover the TBN uh, how that works uh, in, this, uh, in this next section. Okay, when you're doing extended drain intervals on these diesel pickups, or anything for that matter, you need to know where the TBN or total base number is at for the engine oil. Now the way that works is, if you're familiar with the pH scale or the power of hydrogen scale, zero is a acid and 14 is a base. Those are both ends of the spectrum. So if you were to take a cup of acid and a cup of base and mix them together, First off, I don't recommend it. You get a heck of a reaction. It'll blow up in your face. But it would neutralize each other out at 7. Okay, that's where most of your water that you drink is at, between 7, 7.5, right in that range. It's not aggressive. Okay, that's exactly the way the TBN additive in the oil works. As the acids form in the oil, the TBN mixes with it to bring it up to a neutral state. So it can't do damage to the metals in the engine. But at the same time, that TBN is sacrificial, meaning that it's giving up of itself. So on the new diesel oils, for any of the diesel pickups that have the diesel particulate filter, the TBN on the AMSOIL starts out at about 11. Some of the other oils, it might be 9, it might be 10, it might be 8. But <clears throat> once that TBN gets down to 2 on that oil analysis, they're going to flag it and say it's time to change it. Because if you let it go to 0, you no longer have the ability to neutralize the acids any longer. And that's where the acids will start to get the upper hand, start working on the softer metals like the lead, the brass, the aluminum, and you'll start to see uh, corrosion from that. So that kind of ties in the, uh, the reason for the TBN. It's important. Uh, the kits that AMSOIL has has a TBN test in it. A lot of the other test labs out there, whether it be Blackstone or Caterpillar or John Deere, they don't offer on a regular test kit that TBN test. You can buy it for an extra 10 or 15 bucks. The AMSOIL kit already has it. So that kind of gives you uh, the information about the TBN and why we need it. So, hope that helps. Thank you for watching my video. Be sure to check out my other videos and subscribe to my channel at youtube.com forward slash C forward slash Donswell. I'd like to introduce you to Amsoil Synthetic Lubricants. We have the most complete line of synthetic lubricants on the market that offer you greatly reduced wear, extended drain intervals, longer equipment life. You can check that out at my website, donswell.com. I also have a website for looking up fluid capacities. It's fluidcapacity.com. You can go there and print off the capacity of your engine oil, cooling system, transmission, transfer case differentials. Be sure to like us on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash Don Synthetic Lubes. Thank you and have a great day.